Welcome everybody to the 2020 BMW M340i. This car truly is something quite special. Now, I've already had the previous experience with the 330i. That is going to be quite a good enough in-depth video of the new 3 Series, talking about all the significant changes, how it's different to the previous generation, but this one I really want to focus a lot more on the driving experience and why I think this car really lives up to the M performance line, this middle ground, this Goldilocks zone that I think some other cars haven't been so successful in. So we're going to take the M340i for a bit of a drive and then at the end of this video I'll place it in my ranking system to see where it competes against other compact executive sedans and other performance vehicles. background knowledge for the M340i. BMW went through a couple of weird years trying to get the numbers in their naming strategy lining up correctly when the different engines changed from the previous generation of 3 Series. We were looking at the 328i that became the 330, then we were looking at the 335i that became the 340, and this was to all try and line up so that the four cylinder engines were called 30i's, the six cylinders were 40i's, but now that that naming strategy lines up for the 3 Series and all of the other vehicles in the BMW lineup, everything just makes a hell of a lot more sense. But now with this new G23 Series, BMW has effectively killed the normal six cylinder version. Now the six cylinder only lives here in the M340i as the M performance vehicle. Whereas in the previous generation, you would go for the 340i and get an M performance package trying to steal a few of the parts from the much more powerful, much more focused M3. This is the correct mix of both. Now, I was thoroughly pleased when I got the chance to test out the M240i that had a different engine to what's in this one. And then when I tested out the M550i, I was actually quite disappointed by it. This middle ground of trying to be a normal BMW with a bit more power just didn't really work out for me in that vehicle. It just, it didn't feel special enough. It didn't feel like the M meant anything. It really just felt like a regular old 5 Series with the V8 as they have been throughout time. But yet this M340i follows the same mission, it has the same goal, but it is able to actually successfully live up to its mission. And I really quite like it. This six cylinder engine is the B58. Hello. Oh, no, I don't want to be talking to you right now, BMW. That's something we've got to discuss later. But this, uh, what was I saying? This engine is the B58. It produces 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. Not only is that a substantial gain over the 2018 340i, that produced about 320 horsepower, 330 pound-feet of torque. It's a major step up over the current 330i that produces 255 horsepower and 292 pound-feet of torque meaning that motivating this car to 0 to 100 kilometers an hour only takes 4.4 seconds, but I swear to you, it feels a lot faster than that. And it's the beautiful six-cylinder engine that BMW has done so well for so many years, just rolling into the throttle, giving it a little more power as you flex your big toe, is a wafting feeling as the car just naturally and effortlessly picks up more and more speed. Now with this M Performance car, it gets some M goodies. So we've got the adaptive suspension, the butterfly exhaust system, which significantly alters the sound coming out of the back of this car. Now all of those performance merits and power numbers are going to mean nothing if this car doesn't have good brakes. And this one does have the M Performance system. So, It makes you wonder why you'd ever spend more money on a carbon ceramic system. 
These brakes are so good. And of course, I can't forget to mention the revered Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires here that are helping us out too. And then also the variable steering system. And I have no complaints with this steering at all. Any enthusiast of the BMW brand that perhaps were a little displeased with the 3 Series previously, I don't think you need to concern yourself here with this all new generation. The 8-speed automatic transmission is stupendously good. Absolutely no faults with it whatsoever. Now the 340i is only coming with all-wheel drive, meaning that if you're looking to get a 3 Series with rear-wheel drive, you're likely going to have to wait until the new M3 comes out later this year. I think it is somewhat surprising though that despite all of the years of the 3 Series and the M3, the G20 was amongst one of the last of BMW's lineup to get this halfway M Performance model. And if you're trying to figure out if this 3 Series is the M340i from a distance, the smoked grey wing mirrors and grille surrounds are going to be your biggest indicators. A lot of brands are doing this these days. Lexus and Genesis immediately comes to mind of how like for the F Sport or the more powerful Genesis cars they have the dark chrome elements around the grille. I don't know why so many companies are going towards this direction but I think it's fine. I think it looks good. Nothing to complain about. The grille is definitely a different kind of kidney grille to what we know previously. It's got these cascading dark chrome elements. When you're looking at it face on, it just looks like slits in the grill. But when you look at it from the side, it almost looks like elements in the shape of the letter Y. It's a bit weird. I don't really know what it's trying to be, but eh, it's, it's not beautiful. It's not ugly. So I don't really have too much of a bother towards it. Outside of the M performance touches, I do think this new 3 Series is a very handsome car. It isn't pushing the boundaries in any way, but it does look different enough to its predecessor. And that's another thing that I think the new 5 Series really failed on, is that even when they're side by side, I have a hard time telling which one's the new one. There's a fair amount of standard tech in this BMW, including the live cockpit, the 10-inch touchscreen, and the moonroof and the dual-zone climate control are standard equipment as well. Here I have the driver assistance package added onto the premium enhanced package. So that will give me the heads-up display, BMW's gesture control, the upgraded leather dashboard, I love how this screen gives this almost waterfall effect leading into the digital instrument cluster and then on the other side where it carries over and follows the same design. I made a previous complaint with the X5 how I'm experiencing some kind of glitch with this wireless Apple CarPlay system. It's annoying that it isn't as consistent as just plugging in your phone into the USB and the issue simply taking care of itself that way. But what bothers me more now is that BMW will be charging its customers $80 a year, I think it is, in Canada to use Apple CarPlay to have access to a system that is standard equipment in some of the cheapest cars that are on sale today. From the issues I've experienced, you shouldn't be paying money to experience those issues. And the interior in this car is close to flawless. Everything is put together so well. Everything feels great. We've got the ambient lighting in this model and almost everything that you interact with is a soft touch material. I mean, even this portion at the lower end of the dashboard that bleeds in over to the volume knob and your radio presets, that's a squidgy plastic. You can definitely find some hard stuff down below at the bottom of the door cards and up along the center console, which is a little bit of a shame. And the seats in this model are fantastic. You have this manual thigh extension, which if you're a tool driver like me, it's something that I'm actively seeking out for the next car that I buy, just because on long distance drives, your comfort is aided so much more with just this extra little bit of space. And there's a lot of telescoping and tilting adjustments, so I think that anybody can get behind the wheel and find their perfect position, no problem. Here we have the ash open pour wood that you'll see across the center console and along the dashboard. 
after experiencing a few BMWs that have this center arrangement all in a glossy black plastic, I definitely prefer the look of this matte black plastic. Yeah, it's gonna get some fingerprints on it and it's gonna collect dust in the same way, but the glossy buttons are gonna take up so much more time to clean and maintain and make sure they look perfect. A couple problems that I have with the interior, the Hey BMW function that has activated a couple times during this filming just doesn't really work for me. I imagine it's my accent <laughs> and I'm probably not the fairest person to judge on this kind of user interface system or any of the others that I've come across. They just never work. I don't like how that if I want to access the AC or synchronize, I have to hit on this menu button and then hit a few other buttons to try and engage that system. I wish there was just an AC button. And so that wraps up everything I wanted to say about the BMW M340i. This car is impressive, no doubt about it. I'm a fan of the 3 Series as it is. And really, I think that would be enough to satisfy most people. But for anybody that is looking for the next level up until the new M3 shows up, that is, this M340i is the best version of the 3 Series that we can get on sale today. So if you're looking at the new G20 and at this specific M340i, you have no doubts in worrying that this vehicle is a segment leader, drives brilliantly, beautifully put together, and has all of the latest tech and all of the desirable features that any premium vehicle should have. So that's been everything for me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watching this video. Please like the video if you liked it and share it if you think other people will like it too or if they're going out to buy themselves a new M340i. Please send them my way. And don't forget to subscribe as well. That really does the world for me. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon.